give you my reflections on the meeting and stuff like that. So there's that. Um, I'm also meeting with uh, David Rooney uh, Wednesday morning. Um, we talked about at PressCab, um, the rehabilitation program at the school, and um, the uh, what their claim is, uh, <coughs> is that we have a low recidivism rate. Um, so I am going to uh, meet with him about uh, potential data that we could be gathering at the school um, and trying to figure out uh, more detail on uh, the current recidivism rate at our school and uh, maybe how uh, we can learn more information about that. So there's that. And then um, I uh, emailed uh, Linda Eaton last night because also in the press cab meeting, um, she was referencing uh, data that showed um, an improvement in uh, students' knowledge after they go through the rehabilitation program. So, um, unfortunately, she didn't email me back today, which is okay. Um, but uh, she is supposed to provide me with that data um, in the near future. So, I have all those things. Um, and, yeah. Um, and I'll let you know those other small details from the town gallery meeting next week. Um, but again, nothing too urgent there. So, does everyone have questions? Does ever or does anyone have questions? Anyone have? Does everyone know what the recidivism means and stuff like that? No. No. Okay. Well, so <laughs> y'all can speak up and kind of ask me. Um, so the recidivism is pretty much like. If someone gets caught the first time uh, with marijuana, the rate at which they get caught again. So uh, they cited for 2013, there were eight students who got caught a second time with marijuana, uh, using using marijuana. Um, so that's the low recidivism recidivism rate that they're talking about. But um, we raised the point yesterday that um, the low recidivism rate doesn't necessarily mean that um, the rehabilitation program is necessarily working. And initially, at least in the meeting, they tried to indicate, I understood it as them indicating that it was evidence. Um, but at the end, they seem to not feel that way. So I'm going to get detail on that too. But, but yeah, I'm kind of rambling at this point. Um, yeah, so can you all ask me a question, please? I'll take the pressure off of you. What's up? You welcome. Um, how did that Um, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Never mind. Okay. A question I can answer? Okay. <laughs> um, what are you like to get caught with marijuana? Like, you need to see the marijuana in Rachel or? Boy? Is it considered like saying that they just get a smell complaint? Or? I'm, I'm sorry, what? What was the second part? Um, like, because I know people have gotten caught and called, but I don't think anything will happen. Like, what does it mean if you get caught? It, uh, if you get if you get caught again and you have to go through the process. Um, what is so, getting caught? That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, someone smells it and uh, they call the police on you and they discover it. Do they have to like see it, go into your room, see it, and that's when they get caught? Or is it just like a smell complaint and that's in strike? No, I mean, they have to have some evidence that they. Motion to recognize the silence. Yes. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> they have to out and catch like an amount in your room. Like they have to visibly see it in your room. So mm -hmm. once they do catch the scent and they have a suspicion that, um, that it's happening within your room, or they like narrow down the scent to your room. Then, um, cause there's been, yeah, because there's been, th there's been this new policy in Res Life where if, if RA see smoke or smell smoke, then, um, they are allowed to call the RD on call, and, um, because it's a health and safety hazard, so then they call the, uh, police. So it's, like, not necessarily marijuana, but if it's, like, smoke or somebody's burning incense or, like, some, some smoke is coming out of the room. That's how it's it has and yeah, they're allowed to key in at that point. But I'm not really sure on the rules and policies.
policies for marijuana and the suspicion of the drill to be able to enter. Mm -hmm. And that the seed is good. That's actually a good question. I've never thought to ask it. But, um, yeah, so, like, let's say they narrow it down to your room. Um, do they have, like, are they able to then search it without a warrant? Or do they have to? Do they have permission. To? Like, if you have, if, if you allow them in, <coughs> look around. I don't know if they're allowed to search or stuff. I'm not sure. Wouldn't that, oh, sorry, Aaron, but wouldn't that count as a reasonable suspicion? I Thus, think not so. But they're it's not like iffy. cops. Well, they're state they troopers. They kind of, they are. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. When I think of UPD, I think oh. of like, I don't know, school safety and high school or something. Well, New York City is school safety. Yeah. I got a lot of clarifications about this. UPD is uh, state police. They're state police and then subdivision down at the university. Um, when searching your room, they can't search your stuff. Um, say you have it in like a strong have. Say you have stuff in a strong box and they and, or like okay, just a box, any box, okay. <laughs> say you have it anything in the box. They think there's weed in that box. They can't open that box, but they could be like, whoops, I dropped it on the ground and it's open now. Like, even if it has a lock on it, they could like throw it on the ground, say that they dropped it, because they've done this before, and use that as uh, evidence. They can search all of the things that you get with your room, dressers and desks. Um, if you have a lock on it, you're probably going to be good, um, but they could still attain like a warrant type thing. To get that lock off. Your room is considered state property because you're renting. Yeah, you sign away a lot in your so. um, housing contract, which is something I'm looking at right now. So. so there. Any other questions for me specifically? Thank you. So I'm meeting with the library dean on Friday. If anyone has any concerns about the construction? or the Starbucks or Jazz, whatever that is going to be, or like laptop policy, tablets, anything to do with the library, anything you want me to bring up, anything, issues you've had, experiences with library people, no? Okay, um, I'm meeting with Peter Brown, head of UUP, United University Professions, like the union for the professors on campus. Um, I've been considering uh, looking into creating a UUP committee. I know they have the Student Labor Coalition Dialogue. I forget the exact wording. Um, but I believe creating a UUP committee would kind of be a better way to maintain and institutionalize the connection between students and the um, professors' union. So I'm going to be thinking about uh, ideas for a draft of that and have CRC do that eventually. Um, but CRC also met yesterday um, without me since I was in Prescott. But they came with more ideas for the election guidelines, which we're going to go over later. Um, I believe that's everything. And also, there is a New York Students Rising, New York Students Rising meeting Thursday or tomorrow at 6:30 in the atrium. So I suggest all of you go and try to bring people with you, especially underclassmen. Do you have any questions about academic affairs and or governance? Um, <laughs> I had thought CRC was on Friday. What time is CRC on Tuesdays? Well, that's okay, so it was Friday, and then we had to move it because it was the same time as I can send it, which I have to go to. We moved it Tuesday, but now we have to, then press cap assign, they made the press cap time that time. So you reminded me, CRC is now Sundays at 5.30. <laughs> hey. Yeah, uh, the week is not really working for us, but that's what we're looking at right now. Um, that's when everybody's available. What's the library construction system? It's supposed to be a uh, year long, but this whole process had, has faced several delays. So ideally, it would be completed by the spring 2016, the spring 2016 semester. But who knows, it could end up getting delayed until fall 2016. And yeah.
Online conferences, there's 23,205. Research grant, 4,440. And general program, 64,600. <coughs> um, the budget request form is out. So if you're a club and you want to like renew your budget, I guess, um, you can get some people working for 428. If you are a club that wants a line item, you can also fill out a paperwork. Could you repeat GP again? 64, 636. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Well, they just not have a report. Thanks very much. Thank you. Good luck. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a website. There's a website. There's a new website for NewPalsSA.com. Go look at it. not present on the website anymore. Iso, she's not here, but she said club charters are due Tuesday after council, and her office hours on Tuesday are six to eight, or four to eight. Existing club charters are due Tuesday at the end of council. New, club. New yeah. clubs are due March. Yeah. Oh yeah, Fine. I have one more thing to say. Okay, those of you signed up for a SUNY assembly, I need to know whether or not you're going by right next Wednesday because I need to fulfill the um, early board registration, which is like the cheapest registration. What is it again? SUNY assembly. Yeah. Uh, April 10th. Can I sign up? Yeah. Wait, where where is the SUNY assembly? Did you just send me an email to confirm, please? Yeah, because did you put around a sign up sheet last week? Yeah. You want to go too? Yeah. When you get that list, just write down um assembly next to your name too. Um, my report. The retreat is scheduled for next week at Bob as well. The guy's kind of being weird and not answering my calls, but yeah. <laughs> next weekend. Uh, we're leaving at 6.30 and we'll be back on Sunday. We'll pass around a list if you can tell me you can go, if you can't, and that's it. Do you know what time of year coming back on Sunday? Uh, probably be back around 2 o'clock. Where are we going again? Uh, Green Hill. We're getting close to Green Hill. Bus. We had some ideas going around. We want to get more ambitious this year and kind of be like an active part of government since we are the third branch. And we had kind of thrown around a couple ideas of what we wanted to do. Um, there's not a lot we really can do now besides wait for cases coming to us. But we we just wanted to let it be known that we volunteer for anything that Senate or E-Board or anybody wants to give us responsibility to do. We had discussed um, lending kind of the independent eye to budget weekend or being involved in overseeing elections, depending on bill, but it's, it's whatever responsibility we are given, we are more than happy to take on. That was kind of the gist we came away with for this weekend, uh, for the uh, meeting we had last week. So that's kind of our report is we're just dragging, willing, and able, and hopefully going to do a lot this season. Any questions? And uh, Christine wanted to talk about it, but I forgot to put it on. It's supposed to be included. But sashes for senators that are graduating, she wanted to talk about that and see if that's the thing you all wanted to do. So someone got an agenda if they wanted to. That'd be cool. And also, a sash report, forward, I guess. Uh, Having a discussion with everyone. Yeah, for uh, seniors. Um, and also, if at the end of the year, I was to do for you all, like, what would you guys like? Like, do you want nameplate tags? Do you want a t-shirt? Do you want, like, things? But 
things do you want? No? You guys don't want anything? You want stuff? You want to take stuff? I'm just writing a thing. We're not getting other money stuff like stickers or jackets. I could, well, yes. Anything else that you mean that I Cardigans are cute. Yeah. Hoodies. Hoodies. Yeah. Like I said, are pullover. Right. I'm ready to go. You have to admit to you have to admit 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 you have to why? It's a digital iPhone. Okay. Anything else going on twice? Raise your hand if you want to say something. Okay. Just get an idea. And let's see. That's it. For my report. Um, Senate reports. Five minutes each. Anyone have a Senate report for each? Um, UPD committee met last week? Question mark? Um, we're going to do uh, Know Your Rights on March 2nd at um, 7 p.m. in LC100. And we're, um, the Castleovers agreed to come. We're trying to get um, some other people to come and talk to everyone. So, you know, tell your friends, tell your mom, know your, know your rights. And, um, yeah, that's what I wanted to do. Any questions? Questions? Do you think you have uh, asking for Jack and her on the UPD cops to talk about that? Um, I'm pretty sure, but Jesse, I don't recall, but I know that Jesse probably knows. So, I don't remember. Any other questions? <clears throat> Thanks for your report. <laughs> Going once? Oh, okay. Um, so, uh, today, uh, I have my office hours at 2 o'clock. I went to Kingston to meet with Legal Services of Hudson Valley. Um, just to update everyone who doesn't really have to ever go through any uh, legal name changes. Um, uh, uh, you, you go through a process of signing a petition, why you want to change your name, what you want to change it to, your address, uh, some documentation, birth certificate, stuff like that. Um, you could waive the court fee that in our court is uh, $210. Uh, thankfully, transgender people don't have to uh, get surgeries to have their gender marker changed, but that's another process. I haven't started doing that. Um, and, and in order to um, change your name, you have to um, you you have to pay to put uh, a thing in the legal notices of papers. So you have to pay a lot for that, and it gets decided by the court like where it goes. Um, and then you have to publish your address. It's invasive and scary. Um, just so you know what that's like. Because um, I had to skip my office hours today. I need to say something official about today. Um, yeah, we met with UPD. I started working on legislation for um, amending the housing handbook, as well as um, uh, making a declaration, hopefully working towards um, giving more responsibility to Hall Gov and RHSA so we could have an excuse to have less patrols happening or hall rounds. Um, the hall rounds thing is kind of like a joke in the housing handbook too. It's like literally the same paragraph cut and pasted on two different pages and that's it. Um, the housing contract is um, not that great, especially for international students. It's kind of a uh, a run, like a runaround. Um, the housing handbook is also extremely binary, um, so hopefully changing some language to they and the students or students, just those um, changes. 
as well as uh, legislation just saying a declaration against hall rounds, um, declarations for body cameras, just saying that we want those, and um, declaration working toward a uh, declaration for a uh, oversight committee. Um, so yeah, we have procedures for those. If you want to check those out, um, you could ask Jesse. I forwarded all the documentation for those to him. Um, and once I have like, I, I have tons of copies of things on paper, but once I have things typed up, I'm just gonna send it to Senate list so everyone just gets those right away. Um, I'm gonna make them open to comment. Um, once people build up uh, like um, trust in the comments, then they, they can switch over to like editing abilities so that way everyone can just edit. Um, commenting is really important. Um, one time I was like working on uh, the coalition letter for the uh, uh, oversight committee and Jesse <coughs> came in and we talked in comments for a minute and then he started editing things and then he left and he left things unedited and like it looked terrible and I was stressed for a little bit but then he came back the next day and fixed everything while I wasn't looking so he got that but <coughs> Try to make like a, a course of commenting and then changing. Um, let's see. Yeah. Um, in regards to WGS um, and like what we've been talking about lately is like the issue with WGS um, and its funding, um, especially when it comes to the instructors. So uh, I'd like to talk about that more if it comes up. And uh, so yeah, my regular office hours are still uh, Tuesday, 8 p.m., Wednesdays at 2, hopefully catching on that. Um, Transportation Implementation Committee doesn't meet till March 25th, so try to get to me some comments on our transportation around and about. Um, and I'll also try to come through. It, it'll be hopefully at the community center at 7 p.m. on the 25th. And yeah, U UPDs is Thursday at 8. And that's it. Uh, I have a lot of declarations I'd like to share, but I'll do that later. That's all. Any questions? Thank you. Motion to switch election guidelines with administrative response, just to, because one's going to take longer than the other. Is there a second? Second. All right, any other center points? Yeah. Um, two quick things. Uh, Camp Services Service Evaluation Committee meets on Friday. Uh, what it essentially is, long story short, it's an evaluation of the performance of Sodexo. Um, so this includes their customer service, how they manage Oscars, the sub, Hasbro, et cetera, et cetera. Things like tap and go. Um, so this is really a, 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 a lengthy discussion on how, on what, on what, what they can do to improve. So uh, if you have any strong opinions about Sodexo, now's the time to tell me. Um, so I don't go in with my own opinion, and my own opinion alone. Uh, and then next Friday at 10 a.m., is the budget committee. Um, so again, any cash related issues, now is the time to speak up. Yeah, and um, I met with Marsha Tushi today, talking about um, transfer orientation. Uh, she's been meeting with Michelle Combs and people in admissions. Um, some of the ideas they're talking about is more personalized advising for transfer students, trying to shorten um, like the president's speech, the provost's speech. Um, trying to like a real like rearrange things so there's more personal one-on-one -on -one advising for uh, students who transfer instead of just uh, a conglomerate of advising all at the same time. So I'm meeting with Marsha, Michelle Combs, and the, the crew on the 23rd. Yeah. <laughs> That's the person. Yeah. Questions? Comments? All right. Thanks. So next Tuesday, February 24th at 6 p.m., there's going to be a film screening. Um, 
called Case and Coke, and it's all about the Supreme Court's uh, Citizens United ruling, which basically like allowed billionaires and corporations to just throw their money into politicians and like basically like get get their way through uh, the government. So it examines like that whole process, and um, the two directors are coming after the viewing. There's going to be question and answer. It's going to be uh, really interesting. Oh, there's going to be food, so break some friends. Um, I just thought it'd be good because we were talking about how like uh, the election guidelines and everything, like throwing money into government. You guys are all saying like, well, that's the way it works in the real world, but this would be a good chance to see like how it actually affects the real world. Um, so it's at 6 p.m. in CSB Auditorium. Thanks. And I shared the event in uh, the Senate group today on Facebook. So. Any questions, Kelsey? Um, when is the day? Next uh, Tuesday, the 24th. Okay. Uh, six. Six. Thanks. Um, tomorrow, the Black Student Union is having a program collabing with the Lambda, Upsilon Lambda Fraternity Incorporated. Um, we have the program is called Hair on Both Sides. Um, they're gonna have a police officer come in and it's gonna basically discuss police brutality, police in the media in general, and how blacks and you know the whole violence and everything, police brutality. Do I have to come? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, an active NYPD officer will be coming to speak as well. So BHU is gonna be doing one side, and there's like a discussions panel slash debate. What time? What's um, 9 p.m. sub? Oh, lecture center. LC 104. LC 104, 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock? Yeah. Any questions for Nick? Anybody? Thanks. Wait, anybody else? 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 Anybody Everybody. So uh, this week was good. Our Valentine's Day food drive on Saturday was very productive. We got like over three carts overflowing of food and non-perishable food items for the family of New Paltz Food Pantry. So that was good. We also started our weekly radio show on WFNP this week, Monday at 7:30. So we'll be doing that every week. Uh, so if you don't get enough of me talking at Senate and you want to learn more about Nyberg, then you can you can tune in on Monday nights at 7:30. So that's always fun. Um, our student action meeting, or our spring version of our GI meeting, was earlier this evening. That went very well. Good turnout. The keynote speaker was good. So it's looking like a good, productive semester. <clears throat> this coming week at the farmer's market, we'll have a GMO labeling table tomorrow from 10.30 to 2.30 in the lecture center. So I know I mentioned our campaign last week, so if you want to learn more about it and help advocate for labeling in New York State, then stop by our table tomorrow and check that out. But other than that, we're going to be working a lot on getting higher education and lobby day organized over the next week. And we will have several trainings because we have a lot of students that are going to go from New Paltz. Um, so in order to get to everybody's schedule, I had to have a training at 3.30 on Monday, 6 o'clock on Monday, and then next Wednesday at 3 o'clock. So even if you can't make it to lobby day next Thursday, but you want to come to a training to learn how to lobby and learn more about our higher education platform, you're welcome to do that. Uh, you can just shoot me an email and I'll get you the locations of those training times. But uh, that's all I have for tonight, unless anybody has any questions. All right, thank you. Thank you. Hi, guys. Um, so uh, I'm just here to uh, be as a resource to you. I know there's a lot of things that are going on. 
that's kind of relevant to the SUNY system as a whole and some things that you wanted to bring to the assembly. Um, just to kind of keep a reminder that conference is coming up. So uh, I highly recommend it. I encourage all to go. It's a great experience. You get to see and kind of uh, open your eyes to what other SUNY campuses, how they operate, um, some of the things that they advocate for. And uh, it's a great opportunity to do that. But um, I know we have a couple of things to discuss. If you wouldn't mind, while we're discussing those things, I'll be back here. You're more than welcome to make a motion to recognize me to speak on something. If anybody has a question or they want to reference to me, I'll be back here. But um, does anybody have any questions while I still have the floor about SUNY Assembly? Thank you for your time. We have Environmental Task Force, Student Association, I'm SAP Productions. Yeah, SAP Productions. Mm -hmm. There you go. And Alumni Affairs. Alumni Affairs needs chair as well as Okay, we're going to start elections. Since it's just senators, I'm going to ask if you can just stand up in your seat and say why you want to be on it instead of making a hustle noise. I think three seats. Which one? Our Environment and Task Force. Three seats. So, do everyone want to nominate themselves or anyone else? Chelsea? Uh, anyone else? Nicole? Myself. Cool. Alex? Myself. Anybody else? I can't put it. No? Okay. I got a question. Yeah. Um, when is it me again? It's like every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock in JFT. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's still bad. Okay. Um. Alright, you can just stand up. Is that? <laughs> 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 Is there a second? Second. Any objection? Okay, all in favor. What is that? Okay. Me, Jordan. Alright, again, yeah, that works. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, we'll move on to SAC. I forgot the seat. One senator made. One senator made. Kelsey. Nominate. Yeah. Yeah. Except for nominate. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. What is their like the concert? Other than that, everything's the same. Yeah, I don't really have anything to say. We already have the paper. Ready? Do it. Matt? Yeah. Um, I would like to nominate myself. No. <laughs> Anybody else? Going once, twice. Okay, you can just stand up. Say something. This is for like spring fest and stuff, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I really want to help out with this. Uh, a few reasons why I think I would be qualified. Um, well, I'm a graphic design student, so I'd help out with like flying, advertising, and promotional stuff. I'm really good at that. Um, last year I was an on the board, but I mean the day of, I was in at like 9 a.m. helping the whole day set up everything. Um, I know it's like, for the weeks like leading up to it and the day of, it's really like, it's probably a lot of pressure. And I'm really good at taking direction and working well under pressure. And I know there's probably like a lot of tedious stuff, but I'd be willing to do anything that I'm asked of. And yeah, I'd really like to be able to do so. Yeah, okay. Hello, my name is Matthew Gill, if you don't know me. Uh, I'm a counting and black studies major, double major. Um, I feel like I would be a qualified for this because right now I'm vice president of Nudie Ensemble. We, are, we put on a lot of productions and um, events. I'm also a part of BFC. Budget and Finance Committee, <coughs> and um, in the past, before I even, before I came here, I used to be a part of a um, student senate also, where we also put on like big productions and programs and stuff like that. So vote for me.
Have you ever, oh, I got one. James. To both of you, have you ever volunteered for the spring concert before? Yeah. Yes. Yeah? I said that in my speech. Honestly, honestly, but I always wanted to. Because like, in the past, I was like a whole other person. go to the New Day Ensemble productions, you can tell that he has experience on putting on a production. And like you have a lot of passion in the creative part, but I feel like at the end of the day, most of the work, I feel like a lot of people have opinions of, this looks nice, we should do this. But at the end of the day, like the logistics aspect of putting on a production is what most people need help with. And I feel like he's used to doing like the grinding work and the like, paperwork aspect and just, you know, grinding to put on something and make it happen. Besides like creating the creative vision, because I feel like there's enough saves in that. But making the creative vision a reality, I feel like Matt would be very good at that. James, the main, 
Uh, I was going to motion this to vote unless we... Yeah, that's right. I agree. Motion to vote. Is there a second? I agree. Is there a second? Second. Any objections? <laughs> okay. All in favor for...
Three. Um, <laughs> parliamentary inquiry. Uh, don't we have to nominate you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. yeah uh, oh. for clarification, I, I, enter, I entertain the body to make a motion. I'm very entertained. I'd like to. <laughs> Wait, I'm not even small. All right, looks James. I nominate Jesse Hicks as uh, for chair. Except for nomination, Wait. Jesse. Absolutely. Yeah, so pretty much those. Kim, what's your school? Elementary, well, education. Education. Ooh. No, because it's Chai. But Chai is education, too. But it doesn't specify. It's a school. It's a I know, but like. I'm, yeah, for the actual degree itself. Oh, so just. Yeah. What do you guys need? You have to have the chair, the chair design. Okay. <laughs> Can I decide? Chair design? Decide what? You can make a chair. No. You want to make a piece of paper. Any other nominations for a chair or for a seat on Alumni Affairs Committee? <coughs> we still need sides that are not here. Because then it can't meet if there's no chair. I think the Roberts rules yeah. exist. There's two chair wow. nominations. Sorry, who's going for chair? I missed it. Kim and Jesse. Oh. Okay, yes. different. <laughs> I was going to say. Okay. That's it. Okay. I have motion recognized. Um, second. Second. You nominate second. second. I nominated Jesse Hicks for chair or business. Chair. Okay. So who's nominated for business? No. 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 Jesse. Jesse will fill it. Does a chair fill a business seat? Does no. The chair. No. Chair. 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 Also, you still need a business <laughs> student. Yeah. Oh, right. James. James. You should, you should vote uh, okay. Sure. Everyone cool? Nominations in there? All right. We're going to do this one at a time. Why would I like to? Ty? Can I like nominate Jesse as business if he doesn't get chair? I mean, if he doesn't get voter on his chair, he's still going to get motion afterwards. Okay. Except for nomination? Yeah? Yeah. You do? Okay. <laughs> Nicole has a question. <laughs> Are there any senators on the committee right now? Me and Manny. Okay, none of you guys wanted to run for chair? No. That, I suggested it for me. Okay, Ty and Curry. Motion to recognize Mike. Second. I just want to recommend that you settle the chair selection first and get that taken care of. Yeah. Um, and then go into uh, the school position. Just because there's. It'll make it easier for you. Yeah. I wish you could use that because it's a date and total motion. Alright, just a point of clarification. So, what I'm hearing now is that Jesse appoints the chair oh, and re elected. I'm pretty sure yeah. the executive would be Jesse. Yes, because that's what we did, and that was the whole battle with me and yeah. Nadia last That was the fight, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> wow. Oh, not me. 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 Motion to table, alumni affairs, I'm like, oh, what? Let's oh, not do it, somebody. We have to share one, we have proof. Yeah, but then we can still do elections for other seats, Mr. Yeah. Without the chair. No. Okay. Technically we can, I retract my motion. Thank you. Okay, do you all want to do that? I don't think it's wise, but do you all want to do that? Well, you can't yeah. run for, what if you want to yeah, be on it, but you don't know when you're going to meet? Okay, let's wrap this up. I advise personally to make more sense. Table link if you just want to appoint one now, so if you have a chair, and they decide what time they meet, and then you get people on it. And also, if someone wants to run for a chair, or someone wants to run for a seat, they know which one they can run for, which is available. My personal well, opinion. All right, Jesse, just to fill you in, two people out of the entire, well, did you know who's interested? Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Kimberly and uh, Jess. Right, so out of those two, would you like to make a decision now? No. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, sorry. Okay, so what do, what do you all want to do? It's your meeting. <clears throat> you can't do chair legs now. That's impossible. Um, we should have table to the next Is that a great point? Second. second. We, we, we have no one to say. No. I object because uh, Ty is on for an education seat, so we might as well just fill that now. Oh, your education too? No, she's fine for me there. Who is no. so right. she's, but she's not running for education, she's running for chair. No, but that's the problem. If she doesn't want to win it, then she wants to get the education team. Nicole, you were running for the finance? Yeah. Okay. That's why. Alright, where are we going right now? Which one's special? Okay, so we're not tabling it. We're voting on.
education and fine performing arts. Oh, so I see what you're saying. I'm sorry, I wrote this. I'm sorry. I didn't know I was going to become president. <laughs> <laughs> I see no shade, no shade at all. I mean, this is before the election. This is before the election. Okay. okay. Exactly. Okay. Okay. James. So, 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 could we elect everyone but the chair? That's what we're doing. That's what we're, that's what we're thinking about. Right. I want that to be a motion that has to be second and agreed upon. So. Okay. Motion to vote on all the seats that we can right now. I'm going from fine performing arts to education to business. Seats. That's true. Not the, right, we can't do the chair. Second. Okay. Any objections to that? Object. On what grounds? Because I don't think it's fair that they can't run if they're going to. No, they can run, they just won't be nominated. They, then they can be nominated for chair. The question should ask, are you want us to be chair? Yeah, but if, but if you, let's say I do run for it, right? And yeah. I get it, and then I get a chair, or he gets it, and then he gets chair, and then another person that would have been running for that same position yeah. can't get it this week. You understand what I'm trying to say? No, no. I just don't think it would be a smart idea. I think table A would be the best idea, personally. Right, or we could just do B of A today and then table the rest. Yeah, so if they want to table the rest. Do you retract your motion? Then? I retract my motion. Okay, any new motion? Man. Okay, is there a second? Second. Any objection? I object because Nicole is the final performing arts. <laughs> <laughs> we can do it next week. Yeah, I retract my objection. Nicole is the final performing arts. Okay. Don't even think about it. No, what? You still want to run, right? Yeah. Okay. You still want to run, right? Yes. Okay. Be here next week. Be here next week. Okay. Okay. We're going to move on. So many parts. Both of us. I know that's what I'm saying. student legislation. We added the decorations and then you're going to... Okay, you want to get over to sit up here? Yeah. Read the whole thing? Yeah. Alright. Alright. All right. Whereas the administration has historically been unresponsive to legislation and or, and or declarations passed by the Student Association Senate, and whereas the spring 2014 semester faculty governance passed a resolution asking for the administration to respond to faculty legislation within 30 days, and whereas the Student Association would like to adopt a similar policy in regards to an administrative response to student legislation, citing spring 14, March 14th, document two, for faculty governance, and whereas the Student Association seeks to have better communication with the administration concerning student senate legislation, Therefore, the 59th Student Senate issues a resolution. Be it resolved, the 59th Student Senate resolves that when a resolution and or a declaration is passed by the Student Senate that calls for administrative response, the President and a member of the President's Cabinet best qualified to respond to the issue outlined within the resolution or declaration will provide a written response to, essay pre to the essay President within 30 days indicating whether or not they intend to implement the legislation. Example, that. Yeah, and the right. Motion recognized Sato. No second. She drew a she drew a Yeah, I guess. She drew upon this to also faculty like for instance, if you are writing a resolution towards let's say maybe a resolution towards last life type thing. Like that's usually like where the question is so part of the side of three days as well. Anybody that we want to make a declaration. Okay. Can I use the link? No, it's a nice that mostly part of the class. But I also see his argument in that, granted it would be contradictory to it, but we want a more direct answer. I, I, see. I mean, like, because the reason why I said it is because a lot of times, like, administrative response will be delegated towards certain departments yeah. in, to respond to yeah. it. So, like, I'm saying, like, that we say in this resolution that all departments.
But who's up? I think it's just about who's on the press cap first and foremost. Because there's a lot of people press cap. Within the document? You want to so the cabinet. It says the member of the cabinet. There's a lot of people in the president's cabinet that could be qualified to respond to this within the department. So I don't agree with Roger. Is he still in the press cabinet? Karina? Ms. Slater was there yesterday. She's not on the president's cabinet. She's just there because she's the advisor for our agency. So, she's not the president's cabinet. Well, she's the president's cabinet. Well, doesn't it say, I think it's Ms. Slater, doesn't it say that she's the advisor for the agency? Yeah, she's the advisor for the president's cabinet. Should, do we pigeonhole ourselves through the thing? Or? <coughs> we could just be like whoever the president uh, delegates to. <laughs> but do you want to make it that open-ended? Mm -hmm. No. See, that's the problem. Any senator opinion? Great. Uh, okay. I um, really like this because the first clause where it's where they have historically ignored us as a body is very true. I've been seated here for like four terms, I think. It's obnoxious, but trying to get anything done is like. Um, talking to a wall. Um, uh, I read this document. Um, I approve of it in this form. I think sending it directly to uh, administration and the president's cabinet is the um, best way to do it because there is like a top-down structure of command within it. Um, there's a lot of uh, sub departments within it within the administration that can be responded to like it goes up and then goes down to necessary people and I think that there's nothing wrong with the resolution uh, as it is. Now seeing as it is calling for a administrative response, if there's a fault with um, that um, top down uh, res response structure, then we'll probably get a response regarding that. Or what's the point of writing an administrative response resolution if they're not going to respond to it? That might happen. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't put it past them. Wait, you wouldn't put it past them doing what? I'm sorry. To ignore this. Not to to not to only respond. not respond, <laughs> but to not respond to the administrative response what, resolution. What I heard in Osama's report was that yeah. the president was okay with this. That doesn't mean much to me. I'll take it with a grain of salt. I'll take it with writing. If I see it in writing that he gives a damn about this, I'll believe it. Um, you said this is for Exactly. Exactly. Right. So if he signs it, then I'll believe it. But his boss will get there and he'll be like, what? This is hilarious. I like to say that this, I said the last week, this is great, I think. But it does insist that, like, um, it creates our own proper channel that they would have to respond to. You know, since that's the, the argument that they would usually give is that there's never, um, you know, we try to reach out to them in certain ways, we have to reach out to their channels, um, to what they consider their system, um, communicating with them. So I think this is our own system of communicating with us and, reach, and responding to us uh, because <coughs> over the last three years, a lot of issues that we aimed at or that they aimed at the administration have just gone. Quiet, you know, or it's just be like, yeah, nothing happens with it, it's just kind of just goes away. Um, I think this kind of gives us a little um, system that they would have yeah. some more respect and they can. They, would, they look at it and be like, okay, you guys have a system in place. Um, and if they don't respond to the legislation, then we need to have something to back up saying, like, look, we have already implemented the system and you're not responding, so therefore, you're not being transparent, you're not doing this. So you're going to this in whatever manner we respond to. If they don't respond to any other session. But I see you saying that they just might be like, I mean, okay. um, but I mean, if the president said he's okay with it, I wouldn't say, don't say, I mean, you can take it with a grain of salt, but at the same time, you know, you can hold that against him in some way that you, um, you said this was something that you would be willing to work with. Um, and if you don't work with it, now we have arguments to, to you know, challenge him. We're essentially just creating a paper trail. Yeah. And getting a response for it. Adriana, James, and Nicole. Nicole, how to hand up first. Um, anyways, uh, I think if this does go ignored and uh, Don Christian doesn't, you know, uh, 
hold up his word, then we should have some kind of like form of organized resistance yeah. against him not responding to us. And something, something. some, that's a little drastic, but maybe like some kind of class walk out, some kind of, and like actually all of us in numbers and not like 10 people like standing for the hab with like a piece of oak tag, you know, like something that will actually do something. Because I think this is really important and I think that this could have a lot of power for us. Because um, I think besides right now, the only thing that we have power in is like our budget and that's it. But we don't actually have power within the administration. Well, like, in worst case scenario, if it does go ignored, Adrian, hmm? if it does go ignored, I mean, I a lot. I told some certain faculty that we're adopting this, or I wanted to see what the faculty has, so we can do the same thing. And if it does go ignored, I can bring it up with the faculty, and they'll start raising help for us. I mean, they're definitely going to be our allies in this. Yeah, I mean, there are also <coughs> channels, but I would just say not, you know, well, uh, keep organized organization like on there. Yeah, we'll we'll definitely be organized. There are definitely channels within the faculty that we can go through and make some noise. Uh, James, Nicole, Nick, Kelsey. Um, um, to highlight what Asado said, I, I overall I think I think this is great. Um, I, I think it's perfect. Um, I, I do think you should take what Asado said into consideration because I feel like it could be a potential loophole. Um, uh, you know, because he's calling for specific administration to respond, and they could just bounce it right and tell you like, I'm not qualified to answer this. You have to go to the head of this department. And you go to the department, and then they bounce right back to the administration, and therefore you have you have that mess. Uh, well, no, the, res <coughs> the response is not going to be I'm not qualified for this. The response is going to be a full fledged response, not just like oh we're not qualified. Mm -hmm. about this. I understand you're trying to cover your bases, but I'm pretty sure like this is going to be locked down as is. I mean, if they want to use that loophole, then we can start mobilizing and organizing. But you know, don't be like don't take advantage. of it. I mean, all, all, all I was saying was just, was just to add in that word in, in the resolution. <coughs> what word is it? Department. Like, um, can you move for a sec? <laughs> uh, and correct me if, I, if, if you weren't saying this, because I'm pretty sure you were saying this. Um, the third line of the president and the member of the president's cabinet, if you could put in that, and the word heads of departments, something like that. Was that, was that where you used to be? Yeah. Mm -mm. Nicole? Um, with academic affairs, they did this last year, but for yeah, faculty, this is the same right? thing that I was saying. Okay, um, has it worked for them? Yeah, I mean the filing system. They started using um, like the certain what is it, like this type of system, like the filing system that they had. They they implemented. They like it, but in terms of getting a response, I'm not sure they even passed legislation up where they've gotten a response yet. So okay. that I'm unsure about. It. Okay, I was curious. Yeah. Nick? <coughs> Motion to recognize the saddle. Second. Second. Okay. Um, so maybe like we could consider also tailoring it to to whomever it may concern. <coughs> because that kind of goes Yeah, I mean because I mean honestly like a response, realistically a response could be this is not ready for our department. It could it should be delegated to a different department. That's a legitimate <coughs> response, regardless of Yeah, so you, I mean, you could add an amendment to be specific, or you could just say, like, to whoever your, to whoever, whoever is, We're gaming. Yeah, or to whoever is, has the ability to properly respond to this legislation. Okay. Yeah. So, from what I'm understanding, we could just, we, might, we could say this is, uh, is passed, uh, be a result of 59 students that result, resolves that when a resolution and or declaration is passed by the student senate that calls for, but it's not limited to, and we'll list everybody, essentially. I mean, we want to list everybody. That's kind of something we wanted wait, to avoid. In the wait, wait. That is not a bad idea because there is an organizational chart on the president's uh, corner on New Paltz. That we do. So you want us to specifically outline every department that It wouldn't be difficult them. because that organization chart is there. I personally think that's silly. That's, that was kind of the point of this, where we wanted to keep it at the highest level. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's it like a giant simple. pyramid anyway, so it should go down. That, that was my thing. I'm good. Three? Okay. I wanted to motion to recognize Jess Hicks. Second. 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 Second.
<laughs> so it's, act, it's actually funny that you're bringing up a, a resolution like this. We actually saw something similar at, at SUNY Purchase. But, um, but I, will, I will tell you this. I think that by writing this resolution, it's a good, it's a good way to identify that there is some sort of gap or there's some sort of lack in a, a communication channel. I do think, though, that with what I'm hearing from the conversations that you're having with the president, that he is showing some sense that, okay, we do want, we will take into consideration the communication you're trying to put forth. So maybe in your resolution, when you're, when you're amending this and when you're putting focus into this, the only suggestion that I can make to you as a body is that, look, send this resolution off, try it, but also as a body, if you really find an issue with communicating and that they're not responding or they are passing it back and forth in between departments, um, just note that you guys have to stand together, reach out to media channels, and make it apparent, make it, a, make it an issue. But from a goodwill standpoint, I think by just sending this off and then communicating with the president, I don't feel as if you're going to have much of an issue. That's my objective opinion, but again, I'm very, I'm very glad that you guys are writing this resolution. I just, again, have some, have some good faith, because I think it'll work. So just to be explicit, you say you send it as is, don't I would... I wouldn't say as I mean it, it's it's a it looks like it's a it's a a, a direct resolution I, I, at the bottom the clause is saying to will provide within response into the essay it's calling that um, the the person is to be best qualified so if I mean I don't know what other word you could use other than <coughs> best qualified because it is a case by case basis unless again what was mentioned before is noting everybody. Um, I don't know. Uh, uh, um, I, I, I mean, obviously, you know, there are kinks you might have to work out, but I think leaving it at the top it makes a lot more sense because if you just identify every, if you, if, they, if you say, you know, they, the best qualified delegate to respond to this issue, so, <coughs> so if it's, for example, something RA related, I just feel like if you, um, if you separate it, Basically, by adding every, every other department or adding specific other people, it's gonna get lost in the system. You know what I'm saying? Like it's gonna people are gonna they're gonna delegate it. For example, I'm gonna name names. For it has to do with vice president student affairs related. So something to do with our um, GPE or um, uh, what do you call it? Um, res life. Obviously, the person who's head of that is vice president student affairs, which is Dave Rooney. So he's responsible for this because he's from that cabinet. Um, but if you say no, delegate to anyone to the respective departments that are, you know, that would, that are best qualified to respond, you just go like, out right, here, take it, take it, you know, take it, so you just let, you know, let it be to accept someone else, and then probably that response give you a good response as well, and it gives you insight into how the how each administration head is really, you know, thinking and you know their ideology and et cetera, et cetera. I'd say that that's like the focus, but I just think if you expand it, it's gonna get lost in like this system. And you have to keep it as uh, you know, in that top four people. So. I mean, that's also another reason why we're having the president respond as well as a <coughs> qualified member because it, it encourages consultation between the two of them. That's another thing. So now the president gets a better perspective on it or a greater understanding of what's going on because God knows there's a lot of, of things going on in his head. He's busy all the time. So it, it encourages him and want and for, I don't want to say forces, but it really encourages him to speak to his constituents within his uh, cabinet. Um, James. Um, I yield. So, um, Sorry. Yeah. <coughs> he passes it. He yielded his speaking to the man. Because when does that happen? So that was what Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So, like, how press cap works is we, they ask us what we want to put on the agenda. And um, they give us, I think, a week or so in advance, so they can contact. The, um, the, depending on who or whatever we want to talk about, they can contact someone who's relevant to that discussion. So, like when the drug arrest thing came out, and we put drug arrests on the thing, the press cap agenda, they then brought Dugatkin to the press cap meeting yesterday because it was a UPD thing. I like. When we talked about black enrollment, they brought Dean Jones, Dean of Admissions, to that for that conversation. So it's pretty much fine as is because they kind of operate that way anyway. They try to find who, who best can find a way to uh, properly respond to our grievance. 
administrative action I think we're in terms so so just for clarification then I'll, I'll go on to the rest of my my statement is that for the president to check <coughs> off whether he's accepted for action or rejected yeah it's basically an ex it's like this is gonna be like the, the format board we're gonna have the name of the uh, legislation or the, the resolution the declaration here that will be the title he's gonna mark off whether it's accepted for action or rejected and for reason and rejected and reasons for the de declaration are going to be beneath, um, and he's going to have to date either one. I think if you were to call, because I think you're not putting enough for accepted for action, what we do on the SUNY level is when we propose something for the, for the Chancellor or the Board of Trustees, we note in the memorandum exactly what response we're looking for, but we also ask for input. So for example, if we put something forth and the Chancellor totally denies it, she'll write a memorandum to us explaining why it was why it was accepted or why it was rejected. Or maybe what we're calling for isn't the solution, but it brings up something else that could be solved. Um, so I just think maybe you guys should discuss, and this is again, objective opinion, accepted for action, what does that exactly mean, and what can you do to maybe retract more from the President? So would you suggest that we have an accepted and accepted with stipulations or rejected with stipulations type thing instead of like trying to find a middle ground? Reasons why they rejected me? I think no, reasons why they, like they all accepted with certain stipulations. It's like this is cool, but certain things have to be within there as well, or this has to be taken well, out. Well, they rejected with certain reasons that they must know why they rejected Well, yeah, that's rejected. Yeah, that's what's rejected. I just think, I, for that I think just maybe calling for a response is probably your best avenue. I mean, this. I, I mean, if, just I mean, this. This is calling for a formalized response, which I totally. I, I think it's it's appropriate, mm -hmm. but I. I don't know. I think when the president gets that, he's going to look at it and check off accepted for action. But what does that really mean? You know what I mean? What is what is he exactly going to do? What you've put in the resolution? Okay. Is he going to go about it a different way? Um, I just. I think for you, for you as a body, I think to clarify that might be beneficial in the long run. So it should say like accepted with. A plan, like a, like a what will be done with it type uh, line. Where yeah, I guess, I guess you could say like a, you, you put that checklist, but also have or, or demand not demand, but uh, require. Yeah, call for a response. So you accept it. What is your plan of action for accepting a response? For example, it's the water bottles. Okay, now we have. We, we're not going to be able to make uh, a new type of water fountain this year, but we do recognize it, and we're going to put it in for a plan for maybe five years from now. Something that just calls a little bit more of action. Okay. Nicole, three. <coughs> uh, oh, I was gonna motion. Three. Okay. Um, I um. Uh, whether or not we pass this today, uh, I'd like to take a temperature check to see who would be interested in uh, me working with Carissa to organize a press release workshop day where we go over how to make press releases and who's best to send them out to, and stuff like that. That's how I feel about it. What is the temperature This is good, this is uh, this is, no. Okay. Yeah, I agree with this, I think that's the challenge. It's like a fraction, that's what I mean, it's already kind of, it's within there, but it's not explicit. Yeah, exactly, it's not explicit. It says you just have to respond to each decision. I mean, this isn't a resolution for the result part. But um, I think that, yeah, they're specifying something for action on that area. I think that would be the best thing to do. Um, keeping it, yeah, I think I should really keep it in the president's cabinet. I mean, the president's cabinet, I'm not mistaken, has president, vice president's affairs, vice president's involvement management, DP um, back to the DP. Um, the provost, yeah, provost. Um, who else do you want to Finance administration and development and uh, chief staff. Yeah, so uh, those are the people that are like, those are the main core. Um, I think it's the main core. Um, yeah. Motion to recognize Nate. Second. 
Um, I think, I mean, kind of rounding off what Jesse and Mayu said, if you were to add in one line that in between the two that you said interested in possible implementation with stipulation, <coughs> giving the opportunity to respond with notes of what they might want to add or take out, not so much you know, one side or the other, but the middle one. I guess my worry with the putting in just you know, I said it, it's just like now that I think about it, it's like, well, there could be stipulation on this, there could be stipulation on that. Right. We're going to have to come back and you know, just like edit the document or something. That's my thing. Okay. Okay. Second. Any objections? That's fair. Um, I have a motion. Motion to add a 10 minute discussion on institutional memory for 10 minutes to new business. Is there a second? Second. Any objections? Did I get my report? Sorry. Next, we're going to talk about. Fifteen and if, if needed, ask, ask for a five minute extension. All right, 15 minute discussion on starting. Okay. Um, sorry about that test. It was some stupid. Oh, no, Jordan, where is it? Get that out. Because I have a cousin that you want to talk to. I think they're watching over me, so I'm just gonna call it. 
you just want to take it to the How's everyone's day? Good. How's everyone day? Right. Everyone having a good Black History Month? Yeah. yeah. I started feel first today, and they talked about it. It was interesting the conversation that second graders have about Black History Month. What did they say? They basically said that nothing happened in the 1970 to 1990, nothing happened for Black History Month. It was like they did a timeline, and the teacher was just like, I don't really know much about what happened. But, and then it just ended at 2009 with Obama. But she was nice enough to, like, at the end she was like, do you think people are still a little racist? And all the kids are like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But there was no kids of color in the class. Not even like a little tan child. <laughs> that was a second grade. Um, so What's your goal? Cool. How can Jordan. people, like, not still Jordan. be racist? We still call black racist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ready for war, Jordan? Uh, like, okay, call, before we start the discussion, like, no, please Iranian politics speak unbiasedly as not the person who may be running implicit. again for election, but as any student in the school. What? Speak unbiased. Please let your comments be unbiased. Not as a candidate, but as a student. Any student. Zach, can wrong. you read through this <laughs> yes. very slowly? Good. Very, um, very proud. Sorry. Uh, 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 no, no. Oh, yeah. All right, it's, 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 whatever. Ignore the title. Ignore the title. That's, that's a... Zach, can you please read through this? <laughs> Fine, I'll read through this. All right, so here's the... What? It's on the other side. Better? Yes. All good on this side? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we good. Cool. So election guidelines. Candidates will be taken out of the election if caught. We have an idea of a possible strike system, maybe. And that possible strike system is going to be explained here through major and minor criteria of, uh, within the election. To ensure fair and equal essay elections, the purpose of election guidelines will be broken down into major and minor criteria. Major criteria will result in the candidate's immediate removal from the election. Major criteria consist of, but are not limited to, slandering vandalism, which consists of writing, drawing, or removal of flyers, etc. as well, uh, and voter intimidation. In the case of minor criteria, if a candidate is caught with no more than three infractions, the candidate will be removed from the election. We don't have minor criteria yet, but the, the uh, general idea of major and minor criteria are there. Uh, constitution stuff are just things that we're, uh, we are going to have to be implemented to the Constitution. Uh, such as all flyers must be stamped by the J board and sauce office. Uh, both parties will have a list of, of what of, of who has what amount of campaigning material. So both uh, both groups are going to have a list. And if there are more than X amount, then that would be that will fall under a minor criteria. If you're like, for example, excessive flyers or not following within a certain criteria of paper or campaigning material, that will also be a minor criteria. For example, all campaigning material must be no larger than an 11 by 17 piece of paper, which is a legal size paper. If you go over legal size paper, then then it'll run into some problems. Go away. Okay. Uh, also, we have Senate expectations. Senators are required to sit on at least two committees and must serve at least two office hours a week in the Student Association office located in Sub 419. Senators are allowed to miss one third of their meetings before impeachment. That's how it is now, right? Okay. And then we list all the committees. I'm not saying all of them. Uh, declaration of intent is going to be the same. So everything that you read and wrote and agreed to is still on the back. Um, One debated area I think is important is campaign areas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So where you have maybe some students, maybe digital media people who are able to get into a part of CSB or graphic designers who get into a certain area of old library or athletes who have certain kind of access into the athletic center. Not, areas that not all students can access for campaigning. Should we limit or regulate that? I'm starting it now. All right. It's whether it's open to everybody, open to a, to a few, which it is now, or close it off to everybody. Nick. 
Um, I feel like that if one person has an advantage over other, that's their resource, and they shouldn't be that resource shouldn't be taken away from them just because of that simple reason. Um, because yeah, just that. Um, if anybody wants to back me up on that. Well, hold on a moment. Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> 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 regarding the regarding the accessibility issue, um, you, I see. I, you could limit it. What I would, <coughs> what my instinct would, would be to, if, for example, an athlete has access to a campaign in the gym. Then it, I, I see. I personally feel like it should be the gym's responsibility to look up to other candidates and not allow any instead of just one. Um, I feel like that's you know, you know, there's people in the gym, there's people in the library, there's people in the old library that that manage that kind of stuff. Um, back up top, um, the criteria. I feel like you should really look into like defining that. How does one define intimidating voters? Um, I. I I mean, I could debate that for and against, you know, I'm just saying. I understand. Yeah. Um, Second. Motion to recognize the mic. Second. Um, first thing I was going to say is I, I think a definition for what slandering is and intimidation is will be helpful as well. I agree. I think that's really hard to define. Uh, and I, I don't know if you said it or not, but where do those complaints go to? And where do they get filed? Goes to the, is it to the state that to the judicial board? It, we've talked about this. Okay. Yeah. I just didn't know if it was on the thing in terms of earlier. how it's filed and da, 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 da. second. I, one of the things I, we need to figure out is access to college-owned resources, and we're sort of getting there with some of the facility spaces. But um, <coughs> some of the things that have happened over the years, which my office has had to call people in, is when students are using resources that they do not own, but not all students have access to, like Blackboard lists or communities. Um, uh, so like Blackboard is a college-owned resource. And if you're using that for campaigning, and not all students have the same access and rights and privileges that other students do because you're part of something, is, pro is pretty problematic. So last year, we had someone send something through our fraternity and sorority Blackboard group. That's not the intended use of that group, and it's a violation of that group. Uh, a few years ago, we had a student uh, use the psychology department and their, uh, their own resources for campaigning, which caused a lot of problems within the psychology department. So there are some things that we need to sort of put our inbounds and out-of-bounds, and so college-owned resources, we sort of have to figure that out. I think that's different from college facilities in locations. I don't know how you define that, um, but there should be some sort of equity that everybody has the same ability to use and or access something. I, I don't know how to write that, but the, we, we've had issues when people are using um, Blackboard communities for campaigning. Like emailing their entire class. Is that appropriate? But anyone can do that. Yeah. But, but you shouldn't do it. But, you if should. anyone can. but if I'm in a class that has 100 students and my class, I only have four people. You should you, you should be taking Blackboard out of the equation. Yeah, I think it's annoying to do it, but it, not in the, like, coming from the angle that, oh, this is a resource that no one has. Because everyone is taking classes and they have access to these classes and everyone's going to know these classes. Well, I, I will take it one step further with Blackboard. I will say, using a college-owned resource not for an intended purpose is a violation of the student code of conduct. So, and the psychology department um, put the student that campaigned against them up against uh, a student code of conduct for academic integrity. So, we need to be careful about those. That's what I'm really talking about. Um, so, I mean, and that includes class access lists and, and stuff like that, so. Uh, great. Okay. So I completely agree with everything Mike just said, but to go back to uh, supporting Nick's argument here, um, there, um, we should definitely be aware of the college-owned uh, tools that we have and not using, uh, misusing those, but just like we each have like our own communities and <coughs> Say like someone in a frat or sorority just 
doesn't use any like blackboard or anything. They just tell their friends word of mouth, and their friends tell their friends. You know, that could be a big community, and that could definitely reach a lot more people than other people may within their within their communities. So, like our facilities, the people we're surrounded by may be very different, and the numbers may differ greatly. So we can't really do anything about that, but definitely focusing on reminding students of the rules that we're already under in regards to using those things. Um, also, if we're going to title this document, I think it should be Candidates FYI, because that just seems like what's going on on this sheet. Uh, and clarifications for uh, those two things that Mike also mentioned were a great idea. And uh, minor things, I think we should uh, open up a little more uh, to like pass the legal the paper. I think billboards are fine. Uh, I think what we should do is regulate where they go. Um, so that way everyone has billboards in a viewable area. Like if we could just make it the sub building, everyone has access to billboards, or everyone has a X amount of money from the printing office, and that printing can go towards a bunch of paper, or two billboards, or something. So, that's what I got. Next is um, I feel like something that's not up there that I think should go under like intimidating voters is like tabling. Because I know personally, like, being a woman and having three men over your shoulders telling you to vote doesn't really make you feel too comfortable. Especially when you don't even know them and you're just like, oh, oh, okay. And you don't really have a choice of while the three people are looking over your shoulder not voting for them. Oh, now your arms are on my shoulder. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm I'm a, am I the only one that... No, we're not. No. <laughs> but yeah, like, I feel like tabling shouldn't, like, it shouldn't be a thing. Like, I feel like people should have the right to vote in their own comfort of their home or there be a, like, sanctioned communal space that's not operated by the people that are being voted for. <laughs> Never okay. board? Uh -huh. Judicial board. Judicial board. There you go. I'm saying that they, like, let's say the judicial board, they will have a state office open for voting, and they'll be the ones there, like, monitoring who votes or things like that. Because I feel like it's really uncomfortable having candidates yeah. <coughs> over your shoulders while you vote. And there was something else to say. Um, I just want, I just would like Zach or Jordan to go over what our senators now, like, what do they have access to now? So right now, senators can get um, reimbursed, or the essay will pay the print shop for candidates to get 100 black and white flyers, or the equivalent of that in color. In color. 50. 50, yeah, about 50. And actually, that's it. That's really all we yeah. offer. Otherwise, <laughs> otherwise, it's fair game. So what if I print out like 11 by 17? That's fine. Well, no, what is it now? It's 11 by 8? Or is it no, it's, no, it's, it's 8 by 11. Right? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, so let's say this gets passed and I print out 11 by 17. Is that like using my own money to print 11 by 17? That's, well, that's, that's the thing that we're talking about, whether or not we're using outside money. Just like that. Outside money is the next issue. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. 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 Yeah, that's what I
also, um, we should have, I think we should have um, the J Board's information and contact information and whatnot, just for candidates like to know where to report and how to report. Like, just so you don't have a bunch of like kids going to run up to Jordan and Carissa like, hey, they took down my flyers. Like, that's not their problem. Like, that's J Board's problem. So, um, I think we should definitely have their information up. And I agree with Free and how we should have we should regulate like how many flyers, like if should, they want two big ones and they should get two big ones if they want 50 regular ones to shoot. Next. Um, oh, um, one, I have a question. Um, with the whole, all right, so one thing, one statement I have is with the using acts outside money, I feel like you shouldn't limit someone if they want to spend their own money on something that they want to spend their money on, but you can limit how much they can invest into it. How do you track it? Huh? How do you track it? Well, based off, well, since you're tracking how many flies you put out anyway, you might as well, on top of that, you track extra flies after that. Wait, yes. but you're, as of now, you're already getting an X amount that have to get <coughs> you, so if you, No, hold on. So if you buy more, you're already exceeding your limit. But okay. Yes. Now, if you say you... If you say you're tracking how many flyers someone's going to put out in general, right? right? With the number that you give us, right? right. Once they reach that limit, mm -hmm. you will notify that person that they reached their limit, correct? It'd be, yeah, the J. Boyd and Sauce office would know about it because they'd have a list. And then after they reach that limit, mm -hmm. then you can track how much they use after that limit. You, you get what I'm saying? Because it won't be stamped? Well, it has to be stamped. It has that, to be. That's, that's the problem that running into. You, you put it like stamped. on your door, on your front door, inside of your favorite professor's offices. Like those don't have to be stamped. I'm just, I'm just saying those don't. Have to and be well, and the second thing I had to say is that when you say you're limiting people resources and, and access to certain things, now well, I'm in EOP, right? So I can ask Tony to send out. A blast email. Come on, though. Why are you like, doing your like, No, I'm saying, like, I can ask Tony to send out a blast email saying that I'm running for this position. You should look into this. Or if I... Huh? It doesn't say that, though. Why are you doing that? I'm saying... <laughs> Thanks. No, I'm asking. I'm asking. Oh, forget it. No, forget it. Oh, Tony won't send me email. But those professors from those classes, please. People interrupt me. I don't want to tell no more. All right, you heard <laughs> No, okay, I'm not we hurt. have three minutes left, and the list so far is James, Zach, Matt, and Kelsey, Nicole, and Bree. After we get to Bree, I'm going to ask you want to add on five minutes. If not, then we're into this. Because because it's like where it is. You can scratch. Okay, James. Um, so I think I want to say right now. Motion to recognize Jesse. Is there a second? Second. Which one? Which Jesse? Which Jesse? Jesse Okay, great. All right, so first of all, I'm sorry, I'm getting here so I can see y'all. Okay, so the first thing is a basic point, I think. So similar to there, you know, there's this thing in politics called campaign finance reform. Okay, and this is pretty much um, a process that attempts to equalize the amount of resources that candidates have on a local, state, and national level. Right? <coughs> and uh, it has a tremendous amount of support in the country. I think over 80%. So what I would propose is doing the equivalent of that on this campus. So of Citizens United? Huh? Of Citizens United? No, no. no. Of campaign finance. finance. So, yes, okay. so, so okay. it has massive support throughout the country, right? And um, doing that on this campus, allowing people to have the same number of resources, the same number of flyers, would be tremendous in allowing um, the, uh, in equalizing the playing field. Okay, that's point number one. Point number two is, well now she's not here, but to address Kimberly's point of um, the intimidation and everything, a simple solution that is practiced by other schools, including SUNY Purchase, is to end the campaigning <coughs> end campaigning when the election period starts. So we'll we can have promotion, we can have the J board promote, table, etc., and say just vote, 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 vote. But then no candidates will be tabling or allowed to table 
or anything like that if you end campaigning when the election period starts. So I think that is also tremendously valuable. Okay. A third point um, is I don't, I don't, on this specifically, I don't like the major minor distinctions because, like, it seems like according to this, a candidate could put up, uh, you know, if a candidate cheats, it's cheating. And I think that should call for them being uh, dismissed or disqualified from the election. So I don't really understand the major minor thing, but it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And my last point, and my final point here, it's just, you know, is that um, I, think, I think this is good, and this might even be a lesser point, but I think still a valuable one, is adding or requiring candidates to get a certain number of signatures before they get on the ballot. So as of now, um, you just fill out the form and you're on the ballot. I think requiring people to get a certain number of signatures before they even get on the ballot, doesn't have to be high, 50 signatures, something like that, maybe more for eboard, right? Getting people to get signatures to get on the ballot would, if, would um, encourage people to work hard to get to the position and then encourage people to work harder when they get in the position. It legitimizes it, it makes it something you have to work for, to be here for, not that you don't have to when you campaign, but even more so, to get on the ballot, there should be, I think there should be some process and some, um, some work required to be able to get on the ballot. So that's my four points. Yeah. Okay, next is Scott. Uh, all right, well, there was a lot I was going to say in terms of what was brought up. Uh, I'm doing all these people, sorry, I'm doing all these people, and then when I hit the last, which is you, then I'm going to ask for five more minutes, and then we'll continue on if, if it's decided. Okay. So I'm not cutting anything off. I want to recognize you guys, but I got a couple no, points to say. Uh, yes, I agree with Jesse in terms of combating campaign finance. For example, if someone actually has a real job, like someone in this room does, they can buy as much uh, advertising and campaign material as they want and just flyer the whole school if they wanted to. That's not right because that's taking advantage of the money that they're earning, and that's messed up. And if you don't think that's messed up, then you should watch the Citizen Koch link. Because Koch Brothers, they're some evil people. And they, they, Coke, whatever. They, they look like, there is a K. Point is, the more money you have shouldn't represent the amount of support and votes you should get. The amount of support and votes you should get is based on the merit. And that's what, honestly, elections should be, and that's what this bill and these guidelines are trying to get to. It's supposed to be a meritocracy not a, like who has the most money. In terms of taking advantage of the resource that you have, I mean, isn't that something that we try to combat and deal with on campus all the time? Just like some people have other resources and others don't. Is that, is that like the whole thing with privilege and everything? Or am I just missing the whole boat on that? Where if you have certain resources, it's not always right or morally acceptable to take advantage of the situation. What if those people don't have those opportunities or resources to take advantage of, but you do? I mean. I'll just say affirmative action. Just what? like that's that's my point in that regard. I mean, yes, I'm st stepping on a lot of toes and saying a lot of uh, touchy subjects, but at the same time, this is a debate that must be had because the election right now they're messed up. But I'm going to be willing to take the bullets and all the shots uh, of getting something done because we need to make compromise on this and fix these, these damn elections. I'm at fault on it. A lot of people are at fault of taking advantage of this. So let's just fix it now and bite the bullet. We've all done it. Just say we have all done. Uh, next. Is, next is Kelsey, Nicole, Bree, and that's the cutoff, and I'll ask for more time. Um, okay, so I was going to say, I think that there should be, like, tabling allowed, but, like, not when it's election time, like, not when you have a laptop in front of you. And also, um, I know when there's, like, the board of directors for NYPIRG, when they get, when they're running, it's like they follow the state guidelines, which is, uh, to be, the person who's running has to be 100 feet away from, like, the ballot site or whatever, so I think that should be put into this as well, so you actually are like, not allowed to be like, with the person while they're doing something. Next is the polls. Oh, 
Um, well, for some reason, I like the idea of the signatures. I think it's a really good idea. But um, I don't think that we should end campaigning when the election starts because things like Facebook and like social media and even like what texting your friends to like vote and stuff like is that considered campaigning then? You know, I feel like it gets touchy and also like. That's like, I think a lot less people vote because you campaign during elections to like remind people and stuff like, stuff like that. So I think that'd be a really bad idea. Sorry. Great. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I had a lot of questions about that because um, really um, uh, in, uh, enforcing those rules, uh, especially the one she mentioned about um, uh, campaigning ending at the same time as voting beginning. Um, as well as uh, posters, like who's gonna like count the like the fl uh, flyers and posters and stuff? Yes. Sauce office is actually going. Uh, but okay, wait. On that point, I have had maybe like twenty pages stamped, and then the rest of them were just like literally. The person stamping was like, I don't need to stamp all of these. <laughs> Not all of them were stamped. All of them were put up. Like, um, <laughs> what, the, what, they all, okay, what they all tell you to do is to, is to copy the stamped ones. Now, how do we, how do we, like, keep track of copies of stamped ones? You see what I'm saying now? Also, how about, instead of a hundred feet away... Can I have a side conversation stop one at a time? How do you enforce... Let's not say 100, let's say 10 feet. How do you enforce a roommate saying to a roommate across the 10 feet of their distance of beds? How do you stop them from one saying to the other, hey, you should vote for me? Like, how are you going to do that? Um, but on a good note, I really did like the idea of uh, signatures pre-candidacy. I really like the idea of people understanding uh, canvassing and understanding like just <coughs> presenting issues to people and getting used to just talking with people. It might be really interesting. We have a lot of international students that you might learn, you know, a word here or there, you know? Um, and to Jesse, final part, uh, how would we do to campaign finance reform here? Point of information. Mm. <laughs> oh, 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 the only point by that is you limit the number of resources available to each right. candidate. So, so everyone gets X for the print X shop. flyers or everyone okay. gets one billboard or whatever. I like the right. 50 flyers. I think that's the most convenient, most uh, established and precedent. But okay. uh, yeah, pretty much I, everyone I gets the same I think the issue resources. still comes to enforcing that. That's my last point and I'm done. Thank you, James. Okay, so I'm going to call for a motion for an extension. Motion. Motion to extend to, for five minutes. Second. Is there a second? Second. Are there any objections? No objections. We'll look around. Uh, it should be ten minutes. Yeah. Oh my oh, god. I retract. Let's send okay. for another five minutes at the end Is of the five minutes. Is there another Nick? Motion to extend this conversation for ten minutes. Is there a second? Second. Right. Any objections? Oh my god. So There's no one to say Okay, cool. Can I? I'll, okay. I'll raise my hand first. Um, ten minutes I'm going to add on. I made a list though, people put their hands up anyways. So, it was Darlene, Nick, James, Ricky, Kyra, and Zach. And, okay, you're gonna add to it. So, Darlene. I'm gonna call here for 10 minutes. Right now. That's my thought, please answer. Good Okay, um, well, with the whole guidelines, I don't think we can enforce the rules with, like, if you cheat and then you're going to get a speech or something because how are we supposed to like I think somebody mentioned it before to track of like these things because I know when I was running for Senate it's on my cards right now and I don't know if it's down and then it's not a different way you can actually like report that because my next image doesn't come forward and like oh hey I have to go bring down so, so that being said I feel like that's necessary it is there to look pretty and then the other thing is I feel like with the um, well idea that it should be advertise more because I feel like no one actually knows about it. I literally had to go to Hadford and walk around to every single person individual on the table and then they each asked me what Senate is and I actually had to explain to each person that I came to or to, to explain to them what Senate is. So with that being said with the way God might be, I think it should be a little more advertised to people. And I never even saw that when I was running when I was 
complete running in person. I've never seen this. I've never seen those roles. And so with that being said, I feel like it should be a more time more. Most people need to know about it. And maybe possibly like. <coughs> I know. Yeah, campaigning shouldn't just be signed. It should be talking to people. Just saying. So don't make your life as healthy just on making posters. You should be talking. But um, Nick. Um. What was I gonna say? Oh, first to go off with just to <clears throat> talk about what Jesse said about the whole signatures. I disagree with that whole possible option. Just with the simple fact that. You try to go up to people and ask for signatures, that's also going to be a form of harassment. It's just like the same thing with Oscars. You're going to go up to people and you're going to be like, oh, can you sign this so I can run for this election? It's going to be the same thing. And you, nobody wants you to come up to them while they walk in the class. Can you sign this for me so I can run for this election? They're going to sign like, it just to ignore you. What? Like, that's how a lot of people do it. Exactly, <laughs> but I'm saying. It's not it's a annoying. Thing. You know, that, but that, that, that's what we're talking about right now with the whole election guideline, like intimidation. <clears throat> like people are gonna sign it because they don't want to be bothered by it. It's annoying to them. So it's if you if you're going up to them and be like, okay, you sign this. Yeah. That's. I'm just keeping it just next, next to talking, and that's it. So you finish your point, Nick? Oh no, that the judge is gonna say something to retaliate. Yeah, I just want you to talk. Just next time. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was it. That's all I said. Okay. Next is James. Okay. Um. Um. Uh, before we get into resources, I get into resources. Um, so Zach and Jordan, I would think it would be wise to like make a, an amendment to the Constitution because like we're talking about like the like the judicial board's involvement in, in this in this process. So I feel like it's good to have to be in there. Yeah, that's how like, the yeah would be decided. Yeah. Um, regarding uh, resources, um, you know, I I've, I've participated in, in enough campaigns. Um, you know, most campaign material is stamped by student activities. And generally, um, you know, they'll just keep stamping and stamping and stamping and stamping. So if you want to limit, if you want to limit the, of, the kinds of resources uh, candidates are using, flyers, leaflets, stickers, all of that can be stamped. And it has to be stamped. But you can place a limit upon the amount of resources a candidate has. Because, because they have to go to to the secretaries of student activities in order to get that stamp. Um, so that is a way to do that. If they're putting if they're putting their own money into their campaign, they're getting billboards, they're getting more flyers, they're getting leaflets, they're getting physical things. You can't you can't put a limit on social media. You obviously can't do that. You can't put a, a, a limit on word of mouth. You can put a limit on all those other things which which can be stamped. So it so I feel like the power of, of that of that stamp can be used very effectively. Um, uh, voter intimidation. Uh, I, I still would like a more clear definition of that. Um, and I feel like we're not. We're talking a lot about like restrictions, but I feel like we're not. Um, I, would, I would like to have a discussion of like how we try to get more students to vote as as SA. If we're not really talking about the voter mobilization, because that's the purpose of all these things that are wrong is get more students to vote because students just aren't voting. So I feel like you all got to talk about that as well. Uh, next is Ricky, and Kyra, and Zach, and Adriana, and Breeze, and Sarah, and Alex. Um, first, I want a motion to recognize Jesse, then. You can only do one kid. Okay, Jesse. Second. Can I still talk after? No. <laughs> you can reject your motion this time. Take that. Take that. I, re I want to recognize Jesse. Second. Okay, to clarify, um, Next time, then the next time that you do want to do that, you say say whatever you want to say, and then and then make, and then make a motion following your statement. You can't do that. Oh, you can't do that here. Not <laughs> <laughs> assembly man. Money, but thank you. You can do that in assembly. <laughs> crazy with that. You can do that in assembly. Real assembly. It's crazy. Not easy. <laughs> so uh, back back to Jermaine discussion. So I think what you guys are doing here is great, making guidelines. But um, I do want to recognize something, and I do want to entertain that one of you made some motion to recognize Mike, because he's going to talk a little bit about. Um, some sort of policy that you can put in place to kind of uh, limit or whatever he has to say, but um, to just go on the points on what's allowed and what's not allowed in your policy, I think that if you recognize the school's ruling on certain things, like for example, what they clarify is vandalism, um, littering, so forth, uh, certain guidelines, for example, using Blackboard. If Blackboard, if in the policy it states that you're, you cannot use Blackboard for other purposes other than what it's intended for, by just stating that you're following the school's guidelines, you're already canceling that out. 
So maybe doing a little bit of research behind exactly what those policies already limit you to might clarify a lot of your election guidelines. Um, so that's just my, that's just my, um, my recommendation to you guys. I'll help you through the process. So. All right. Mike. Um, I just wanted to talk about the signature thing. I agree with what Nick said because I feel like although it's a good idea and like the idea behind it is smart, I just feel like anyone can stand outside of humanities and just get like 50 signatures and there won't be like any like real motivation put into it or real like communicating with people because you're just trying to get signatures to get on the ballot. So I don't know if it will be effective. Zach. Uh, what should I get? Second. Second. Thank you. Um, I think uh, Bree mentioned something about enforcement and being able to, how do you enforce things? And I think that's a really good thing to make sure that you, all of these things have to be enforceable somehow. Who, whose job is it to enforce? Um, you know, in, in terms of the stamping thing, that historically the problem we've had is, yes, we'll keep stamping because if someone comes in and said, I spent my own dollars to get 400 flyers stamped, okay, well, there's nothing on your rules to say, I, I can't stamp. So, you know, if you're going to limit, uh, you know, so much, then you need to say, we give student activities permission to only stamp 50 flyers or 100 flyers, and we can count and stop. I don't know if you want to do that or not, but right now we just stamp away. Um, which, less stamping I'd be happy for. Um, but uh, I, I would say there are some campus rules to keep into consideration, you know, post... Things that are automatically going to get taken down, if you're putting flyers up on doorways and trees and light poles and those things, those flyers come down automatically because the college is going to remove them. So it doesn't hurt to put that out there and say, flyers can go here, here, and here, and, and those, are, those are what are protected. If people are complaining that flyers are coming down because they're posting them on you know, trees and flower pots and sidewalks, well, those are going to get taken down. So, you know, campus rules is, 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 is an important thing to kind of put out there. Um, the signatures thing, I think that's an interesting conversation. My one comment with that would be is, who's verifying that that signature is a student and who's counting? And that's a lot of work for somebody. Um, what I would recommend and is um, have what I think would be really cool is if people wrote a statement of intent or a statement of purpose and said, this is my platform, and then that goes up on the essay website, that can go on, you know, a click on the candidate's name on the election thing, and they can click on it and see what someone stands for and what they're running for. I think that's way more powerful if someone submits a document that then is a public document, um, a, a statement of intent or purpose. So I, I'd like you to consider that. Um, something that... Uh, is traditional, but it's not really written anywhere, is uh, a period of time after the elections are announced. There should be a period of time where an election can be contested before they're official. So I would recommend that we put in a window that, you know, there is a 24-hour period in which an election can be contested until all elections are considered final. Um, just to kind of put it out there and let people know that there is a time limit in terms of how long they can complain and file a complaint uh, would be helpful. Um, Senate, like six years ago, banned students from running in campaigns or parties. Um, that's something that hasn't happened in a long time. Uh, but there used to be two big parties and people would run on a ticket together and that entire ticket would get elected. Um, and at some point in time, that was a rule. And at some point in time, that was banned. And at some point in time, that policy disappeared. Um, so uh, the question is, are people allowed to campaign individually? Um, do you permit people to campaign collectively? Uh, I would advise against it. I think it's, um, you know. <laughs> but, I don't know, wait, something wait, that's wait, done. Wait, what was the name of the parties? That's what I want to say. They changed every okay. semester. <laughs> well, can you give an example of, like, the name? It would be like, we are the... Like the vote for value ticket. Vote for value, yeah. or I'm the Scooby-Doo party. Yeah, yeah. it really could be anything. <laughs> something that's like... But you would, what, what would happen is, is you would get 
uh, 16 people to run for 16 seats, and they would run on a ticket, and those 16 people would get elected because those are the 16 friends, and they would run together. Um, and that's, at one point in time, that's how Senate filled itself for a very long time. Um, Other schools do that. And so I'm just saying that there was a rule at one point in time banning that. that Can I have a call for order, please? There's a lot going on at once. Mike? So I'm done. I just wanted to throw that that there was an existing rule that disappeared somewhere. Um, I'm going to call for a minute for like any last hands, but next Adriana, Breeze, Sarah, and Alex, and then it's the end. So, all right. Okay. Um, so. First off, I think a solution to a lot of these problems would be having a meet the candidates that isn't run by council boards and that's open to the campus and lecture 100 or something. Uh, so we don't have to you know, put in all this effort for web design, for people to go all the way to the SA website and look at stuff. People can just go to this event, listen to people see, and everyone gets their face shown. It's more accessible than walking around and asking for signatures because I also don't think everyone has you know, if someone's disabled, it's a little difficult to go around asking for signatures because it's hard to be mobile generally. Also, if you have the social capital to win the election, you probably have the social capital to get enough of the signatures anyways, so it's kind of redundant in my opinion. Um, yeah. yeah, also, uh, James said something about voter intimidation. Mm -hmm. I guess, I don't know, I feel like it's a little self-explanatory, but I guess we could put it in more extreme terms hovering over someone in a public space with your own device, having it logged in, um, touching someone without their consent, um, yeah. being right. in places where you know that a lot of people, it's just, I don't, you know, people don't go to Hasbro to be asked if they want to vote for some people go to Hasbro because they want to eat. And it's, it's annoying in general when other clubs do it, but I think, you know, we should rise above a random sororities and glee club or whatever, you know, handing out little papers, you know, because other people hang out in Hasbro doing things like that. You know, we're, we're a little better than that, and that's not how our election should be run. Maybe we can also propose a more public, uh, like, you know, we can have people vote online on their computer at home, but we can also maybe host, like, a room we could just like take over one computer lab and be like, hey, this is going to be like a voting station and just encourage people like that instead of, you know, if you want to enter this room and vote for people, you can, but you don't have to. Um, yeah. Next is three. Okay. Um, okay, first thing, uh, off of what James said, uh, talking about voter mobilization, uh, I think we could try to work out a... Uh, um, worked out, worked on publicizing elections, uh, working with RHSA more, getting Hall Gov to kind of, uh, you know, kind, kind of like talk about it more. And uh, uh, it comes back to like my ideas for uh, uh, regarding the housing handbook. I, what I'd like to see is uh, Hall Gov um, doing more um, talking to students. Yeah, just going door, door to door, being like, this is, what, what, this is what's on campus, this is what we're doing. As far as uh, student government goes, this is what's happening. This is when elections start, here's the list, here's the committees. And just doing more rounds like that could make a safer environment, and a stronger community, and give more reason to not have UPD do all rounds. Back to that. Um, okay, off of one of the points that I made within that, um, some people here didn't have access to flyers and stuff. Like, sometimes it's not publicized enough for people to know. And there's other people who don't need them, rookie. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, um, so that's just that about flyers. Uh, to, uh, yeah, um, yeah, talking about the school policies is great. Um, so that way we could like wrap that up and like really um, bring students to awareness about like the handbook again, just reiterating what's going on is really important for memory, you know? Repetition is <coughs> the mother of education. Um, I like that we banned parties. I didn't even know we had that. Um, 
Yeah. Oh, and back to Mike's point. Back to Mike's point. I think we should uh, be open to a variety of different things. Like we can have stickers stamped and such. So that'd be nice. I just love stickers. Uh, this is just in relation to what Mike was saying. Like he said, um, if you look at campus policy, and there's a limit on places where we can post things. Like we can't post on trees or sidewalks or what have you. But I'm wondering if we could take that a step further and maybe define like what acceptable public spaces are. Like there's a set number of bulletin boards, and that makes it easier for whoever's policing this to enforce it. And they can walk around and be like, okay, I'm going to check this one in the sub, or I'm going to check this one in this enforce. residence hall. And that these, those are the only acceptable places to post flyers. Like, that's existing already? I have an existing. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Is bathrooms on that list? No. Can bathrooms be put on that list? Oh, public space? That's weird. Yo, imagine going into a store and there's like 50 people. Point of order. Point of order. Next is Alex. Three. Fair definition point. That's it. Oh, Alex. Okay. Um, just to go back, Jesse, you... He's not here. Can I get everyone's attention, please? Well, Jesse had mentioned that he didn't understand why there was major and minor infractions. And the reason we put that in is because, like, as Bree pointed out, sometimes they don't stamp all of them. So maybe if you found, like, one poster that was put up it didn't have a stamp, maybe that was the one that didn't get stamped. But then if you found a couple of them, then a couple of minor infractions would lead to a major one. Um... As for voter mobilization, I agree with what James was saying. More advertising for the elections in general, not for a particular person. Just like a big banner maybe from some other <coughs> budgetary standpoint that is put up so that more people know that there's Senate elections because that was the major problem that I was facing is that people just didn't even know what was happening. And then as far as voter intimidation, um, I know in CRC we were kind of we talked about it for a second, but it kind of got breezed over. But um, I I would just like to consider rather than changing, um, trying to enforce a bunch of rules to like try and limit voter intimidation, just changing the process in which we vote. It used to not be online. It used to be you would have to go to a table and you would have to manually write it down, and it wouldn't be the senators telling you it was like it was voting time. So then if we set up, it could still be electronic, but it could be from just specific computers at specific stations around campus where all the students would be walking around. And then you like you wouldn't be allowed like as a senator running to be around those areas. This is my idea. Cuz then voter intimidation would it, it would be like impossible. And that's it. Um, that was the last person to go. Time is up. I have an idea though too if y'all want to hear it, but if not, we can do it. I do. Yeah. So quick. My idea is to get rid of flyering altogether. No flyering at all. No campaigning like that. So, right. so basically what it is is you sign up to run for Senate. Senate takes a picture of you, you put it online. There's your platform. If you want to like, you know, put your word out there, say, hey, go to this website, my name's on it, and so other candidates. They read the website, and then there's one week of candidates that everyone goes to, if you're there, and if you're not there, it's your problem, you talk about what you want to do, and then there's election, just like Alex said, there's a room for a senator, you can't enter it, and you vote, and that's it, I don't know, that's my idea. Okay, okay, okay. we have a more time though, once you guys want to add on, this is, you know, motion for motion for this I think we got a idea now. <laughs> I agree. I, I've been taking notes this entire time. I got it. I, I think I got the gist. <laughs> what everyone was saying? Are we going to move on? Motion to recognize Jesse. Thanks. Second. I love you as chair. Can I just make that motion really quick? I just want to say round of applause for your chair. Because let me tell you something. This morning was really so much, so impressive. It was so impressive. I already was kidding. Um, so, so that's that's honor off the record. You'll decide. Um, so, my my opinion is objective. You guys come up with whatever you want. I think that's I think your proposition 
does make sense in the fact that if we're going to be talking about how we're regulating exactly how we're posting things, um, if it's that much of a debacle, instead of discussing so much on how you're going to regulate it, you might as well eliminate it altogether um, and make the effectiveness of it. I just want to make a point that everybody's discussing on uh, voter intimidation and so forth. Um, I think that you have to recognize that campaigning, campaigning in general, it, I mean, when you're running for politics in any capacity, it is about social capital in the sense that you have to communicate to people on why you want them to, why they should vote for you in any sense, or even to get them involved in the voting process altogether. So you need to, um, I think you guys need to eliminate that. That's my opinion. Um, but I also think that, I don't know what you're experiencing in the past where there's so much voter intimidation. That, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. We'd have, people, but, we'd have people with laptops in their people's faces. But. That, that's a little rough. I think, again, I think you maybe regulate that where if someone's found of that, they're disqualified. I think you'd eliminate that. But, but, but that, yeah, that's why we got more yeah. um, But I think you guys, if, if you're, if you're going to use flyers, I mean, you're utilizing what Mike, Mike had mentioned, that if you pass a rule that says you can only have a certain amount of items stamped, plus by including that you're following the school's <coughs> guidelines and policies to begin with, I mean, you're pretty much eliminating everything you guys discussing right now to knowledge. So instead of wasting time on it, I think you guys already have your minds made up to figure out what language you want to use. And um like let's say for example Mike in the sauce office is okay getting stamp. Maybe we should have a list of all the send the people running and have it like you know where people, the whoever stamping it can see it. Oh, we do and that. And when they oh you do that already? Yep. Oh. I put it right there so that way we know who all the candidates are, so that way we'll stamp them when they. Yeah, so in. they can know like oh a hundred like cross them out. I don't know. Right. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Chris, uh, your idea was great. I would love to see like a candidates corner on newpaltsa.com. That'd be so great if we. What? Like, if we had, like, little pages that we could share and, you know, get the word about New Paltz Essay. Yeah. All right, we're going to move on. One of the, my question is. Yes, I agree. Okay, there. Motion to take press cap off the agenda, just in terms of time. I mean, institutional memory is obviously taking longer than like five ten minutes. I mean, take your answer. I said second. Any objections? Okay. We'll put it on the agenda. Press cap. Yeah. We're going to talk about press cap and talk about the reports. It was going to take longer. I think we should. Yeah. I kind of wanted to. Yeah. Okay, so I didn't get to um, make a Senate report because I have class, so I have to come late sometimes. But basically, one of my Senate goals was to improve the institutional memory that we have here, especially at Senate. And um, I've thought of some ways to go about that. And I was thinking either put, besides like, co like kind of going about this like more archival, like putting a section on the essay website for this, or maybe making it its own website, because I think being able to digitally access information would be really good. And also, if anyone would like to help me with this, basically, like a wiki, maybe. But um, I was going to go about it by basically talking to administration, like administration, like Mike and like Linda. And some people have been here forever, more for like oral history type things. And then also um, kind of just collecting things that already exist, like nicer's like state of the campus, um, kind of manifesto thing, and other things like that. Archiving, you know, like the cyber activists, like. Facebook group chat that used to exist or used to be more oh, more active. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Whoa. I I archived it on Whoa. Facebook, so I have it forever. Um, and just like other things that have happened, we see just talking to people, contacting maybe even alumni affairs could help with this, contacting alumni, former Senate former senators, things like that, just going way back in the Senate chain. Things like, I think Zach once had the student handbook from like 1950-something. Even going that far back would be a really good point of reference. So, I don't know if anyone 
wants to, I'll send out an email to the tall Senate, and you can email me back if you want to help me with this. But I think it's really important, and I think a lot of things have been kind of lost by the wayside because people forget. What? I didn't know you were going to You could take a full Manny. Office just for a while. Yeah, I agree. Another idea is in the library, I would take over now, so I don't think you need it. Can you talk about it? The media center, like there's like a media center in the thing, uh, I don't know what it's called. But they have, they have archives, old, like, Oracle, mm -hmm. all these pictures, and you can, like, you put it through, like, a slide. Like, I don't know. I'm sorry, can we stop having side conversations? I can't hear many. Thank you. Um, uh, you can have, you can, you can look through it, and, like, <coughs> turn for, um, it was like a projecting slide, projecting slide, so you put, it's like a film world that you can see old like oracles from like the 50s and 60s and 70s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you can look at like things that happened in 2005, 2004, you know, issues that maybe were present in the past um, that are still affecting us now. <coughs> That's something that you can do. Possibly just like look at it. Have like a big and do all that and do that. And, like, uh, Thank you. Yeah. What if you get story. You said it. I'm saying to, like, <laughs> so passionate. to get, like, to keep, like, you know, track of, like, all the things that we do, like, the, 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 Goldie. Second. Wow. So I was, me and Sal, we were talking about getting interns. So we're looking into getting um, um, a digital media intern and a marketing and PR intern, two of each. And the um, marketing and PR intern, they'll um, be in charge of the bi weekly newsletter that like is involved with our website now and the Facebook and our Twitter account. And then the digital media intern will document essay funded club events and news and all that good stuff. So like events that are happening happening on that day, like on the Twitter, it'll he will be notified like eight PM. Mm -hmm. oh, and then like the newsletter is gonna be like bi weekly and you can like send out a blast and when you signed up about all the events coming up in the like essay events that are coming up in the following week. Round up. 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 Many? So basically, it's like having an assistant. Like, <coughs> getting coffee and shit. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Yo, no, no, no. It's, it's, what kind of internships have you had? No more chairs? Get on here. <laughs> 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 you want to be the, the, the yes intern? Um, motion to recognize Jordan. Second. Uh, wow. Two, two things. Um, one, have you heard of WikiPulse? Yeah. I have, but I was having trouble Wiki like Pulse? finding the yeah. Wiki Pulse. So I was Wiki also Pulse. thinking I about building gone. upon Wiki Pulse and making it less Just look less cool. ugly, and then yeah. Aww. going Aww. from there and like yeah. updating it and stuff. Or yeah. just using it as a resource and then making something new. Yeah. 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 I have no idea what happened to it because I tried to find it sometime. Mm -hmm. Long story short, about Wiki Pulse, it was like this whole like wiki database thing that documented like everything new pulse created by Justin Holmes, former president of SA. Um, and yeah, it documented a lot of stuff and I'm not really sure what happened to it. But it was basically for that purpose of institutional memory so people could refer to it for things like years on there. And it was active last year, I don't know what happened to it. Um, also, part of my job is to document the legislation, which like I have just in the VPAG email, there's legislations from my terms is VPAG, also Jay's, Ayana's, Caitlin Ryan's, all there. And the old website had the section where you, like, there was a legislation section where you could see the legislation from like the 40th Senate, 41st Senate, 42nd Senate, all there. Um, the, the further away we got from the dude who 
set that up, the less understanding, like it was hard to really get stuff. I'm not really sure how to get stuff on there. So I have things, um, but now I have the new website. So I'm, I'm tr I don't really know exactly how to get everything on the new website, but all of it is in like these different essay emails. Okay. So we do have like all this kind of stuff like documented somewhere. Okay. Even like less formal like legislation, like even things like minutes. Minutes. Also, just I think it's would be better hearing more of an oral history from other people because it explains it in a more digestible way, and you can like in like a way that people would understand like what happens because sometimes legislation feels more convoluted. And I think like having like. I think kind of archiving these things in a way that, you know, like having the actual things that, like the physical things that are, you know, you really have to dig through to get like the real, like raw information, like more primary sources, but then also having more of a secondary source where it's kind of all summed up. Like say like a certain issue, like there's different sections Can you for give like, an example? like maybe if we were talking about drug policy, so there's a section for drug policy and then there's like basically like a written history with it and then under it would be, under that section would also be all the documentation to support everything that was said in there. So if people really want to look at that le piece of legislation or that article in the Oracle, they can look at that, but it's like summed up there for them. So if someone really wants to know about the history of, drug, of the drug policy as soon as New Paltz, they could, and then if they want to go deeper into that, they could, but they don't have to. So like a database? Yeah. I like it. I like it. And like WGS and even black studies to refer back to WGS because they kind of go hand in hand with the fact that black studies have the same status, WG doesn't, but then there's different reasons for why those things happen. I just think, you know, yeah. Um, I know it's like old school, but do you think that it would be kind of useful as a paper trail too, like at physical paper trail? Like, yeah. Um, because I feel like everything's online, everything's on the computer, but Happen, you know, like, crash, you know, you know, you know, you know, stuff happens. Like, you know, like eventually, everything gets released, and then you're like, ah, oh, time to So, I mean, you guys, if you get that intern, that person can just pop in. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for volunteering, honey. Wait, what? Thanks for volunteering. Right? <laughs> Print out, um, like, all the other all the, all the legislation minutes. I actually put them in, like, a folder year by year. No. I know there's a lot of work and we're used to like everything online and everything, but And you think. can print stuff out, and make it online and then you print it out. Yeah. Make a binder for each topic. Yeah, just because because I found like in the office like two years ago, I found like a bunch of folders from like the nineties, you know, like the eighties and found like articles and legislation and minutes and it was pretty interesting. So like, Also even like <coughs> essay orgs, like a lot of orgs I think especially ones that have been around for a while and they have their own offices. At least I know for Pride, like, we have, like, so many journals from, like, at least going 20 years back that people made for, like, things. And, like, I found out things about the club that I had no idea about just, like, by going through these journals and stuff. And I'm sure, like, other orgs have the same kind of thing. Like, and you can, like, learn about, like, what they did at this time and stuff. Mm -hmm. A lot of orgs, you know, but some are really old. Oh, Hari has, like, decades of blackness in there. <laughs> <laughs> decades of New Paul's blackness. Um, it's 10 minutes. Do you guys want to extend it? Uh, Zach? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. See you next week, guys. Hold on. Let's try again. Patrick, yes. That's going to be the game first. Yes. 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 Yes.